<laughs> What's going on to all my Succession fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with my weekly recap, breakdown, review of the latest episode of Season 3 of Succession. We're breaking down the 7th episode titled Too Much Birthday, an episode in which we see Ken celebrating his 40th birthday. We see Rome gets another W and we got some news to discuss about Greg and Tom. We're breaking it all down here in this spoiler review, but before we dive into it, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel, well, welcome to the community. Consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell that way you all can get the alert for when i drop new content if you enjoyed this spoiler review well make sure to like and share the review it helps out the channel a lot but I also appreciate the support and in the comments below once you've seen the seventh episode because we only got two episodes left let's discuss everything that you enjoyed about the episode what you didn't like about this episode your thoughts on shiv and rome and ken and his 40th birthday khan maybe being the president by the end of the season or I should say maybe next year and of course we got to talk about the news that greg and tom getting this episode and everything in between in the comments below so just briefly my thoughts on this episode I really enjoyed it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, last week, I, I did my review. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But some of you all like interpreted my thoughts and episodes like, I hated the episode. It was the worst episode of all time. But it was just, I had my reasons why I didn't enjoy it. But overall, I was still intrigued by it. But this is my cup of tea. Yes, I am intrigued with who's going to be the CEO, who's going to be the next president. But I'm more interested in the Roy family, and particularly the dynamics between the siblings. And more particularly, I'm a Ken fan. And I mentioned last week how I feel like Ken's story it's kind of felt like lost in the shuffle, but focusing on him in this episode really uh, impressed me. I, I'm loving the stuff we're getting with Shiv and her just continuously getting shit on by her dad and being left in the dark. Rome getting closer to that CEO position. Of course, Khan doing his thing with the presidency. And of course, my two favorite, Tom and Greg, getting some good news. So I really enjoyed the energy in the episode, the pacing. Whenever we have a family gathering, I'm always up for it because it's some of the best stuff. And I just really enjoyed this episode a lot. But hey, I want to get into my reasons why, but I want to know your thoughts on this episode in the comment section. So let's break it all down as we open the episode up with the birthday boy himself and Ken, who is preparing to go on stage for his 40th anniversary. And we all know, especially from last year, season two, or say two years ago, he does not disappoint when he's rocking the mic. So we see he's going to be singing a song about honesty. There's a cross that's going to be involved. And I'm like, yo, sign me up. I was just so excited to know that this was going to be a Ken Citric episode. And boy, it did not disappoint. But more importantly, in this opening scene, we notice that Naomi's back in the picture. We haven't really gotten to her uh, or seen her in many, many weeks. And we talked about her, uh, you know, in episode one. Is she, does she have good intentions with Ken or is she just using him? We're going to talk about her in this episode, but again, it's time to celebrate, ladies and gentlemen. But speaking of celebrations, we see, we move on over to Logan and we see his team getting out the champagne bottles and it's not you know, necessarily a celebration, but they got some good news. The whole FBI raid situation is looking pretty good on their side, right? We learned that it's going to just boil down to just a civil suit. They're going to just come up with a number and wash their hands clean of the situation, but more importantly... There's no jail time on the table, ladies and gentlemen, which makes Tom so happy to hear that news, especially when Logan goes up to him and say, hey, I'll remember. So, hey, we'll see if Tom's going to use that, that you know, redeem coupon to take on, you know, Logan promising him that he's going to remember what he did for taking the fall and maybe taking the fall and going to jail. But uh, we'll see what shakes up of all of that. But good news so far for Waystar and Logan's team. But this was the true celebration in the episode, ladies and gentlemen, as it is Greg and Tom, as Tom makes his way to Greg's office, he's like, oh, what's going on, you know, Greg? And oh, she screwed over a little bit as he lifts his his desk, kicks his stuff around, he's yelling in celebration, and obviously Greg's like, I don't know if you're happy. I don't know if you're sad. What's going on? We see Greg. He tell he learns the news from Tom. And I mentioned a couple weeks ago, I, I'm looking for that spinoff between the two characters, in particularly a love story of these two, you know, best friends that are just destined to be together. But we see Tom goes in for the kiss and he kisses on the forehead. And again, just seeing Greg just being so confused and like struggling to pick up his desk and just seeing the celebration for Tom was something that I really enjoyed in this episode. But hey. Maybe a little bit too early to celebrate because the question I have for you all, is the jail time completely off the table? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. But let's quickly check in with the birthday boy, Ken, as he's hearing who's going to be coming to his party. Not, not a small gathering. It's a festival. It's the Ken Fest celebrating his 40th birthday. So, of course, he's going to invite all the big celebrities, all the big business people, and not so concerned about sharing it with his loved ones, the people that have been there with him since day one, but more particularly people that don't even really know him, which speaks so highly about this story that we got very early on in this season with episode one and two 
Ken just cares about what people think of him, right? He just wants the outside world to think that he's this kind of person that's out for justice. He means well by people. So again, we just see this, this fake facade that Ken's been putting on, but we get to the meat and potatoes and his real psyche a little bit later in this episode. But going back to Logan, head honcho, he's getting back to striking deals. He wants to buy this streaming service by the name of GoPro, uh, who is ran by a character by the name of Lucas, who we meet in this episode, played by Alexander scars guard and we see that that head honcho lucas doesn't show up to the meeting but instead he seems he sends his b team to meet with logan and we know logan doesn't talk to the minions he only talks to the person in charge so he's not happy with that and he's like you know what f him i don't want to deal with them let's renegotiate with the pierce family i'm like what 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 i thought that that was completely off the table especially how things ended with him and holly hunter last year and she got fired for that whole situation so i don't know if that was just logan just blowing smoke and just saying whatever came to the top of his head or if he seriously wants to renegotiate buying the pierce family and will they reappear with only two episodes left let's talk about that in the comment section but moving on to Logan and the puppet master. He has a new puppet that he's playing with right now, and it's his son, Rome, as he tells him, hey, Rome, I, I hear you're going to your brother's birthday. Go ahead and do so, but also talk to Lucas at the party because I hear he's going to be there, but also I got a gift for him. Make sure you give this to Ken, and we'll talk about that gift that he gets from his father, but we spend time at the birthday party. Now, if you are a fan of this show like I am, you know that succession never disappoints when it becomes a family gathering. So I have a question for you all in the comments. Which of these parties or family gatherings, if you may, is your favorite out of the list? Now, I, I'm not, there's maybe some that I don't mention, so if there are some that I don't mention, let me know in the comments. But out of these parties, which was your favorite? Starting off with number one, season one, the annual foundation gala that showed you know Logan going on stage when he was just recovering, saying he's not going anywhere, he's still going to be a CEO, shocking everyone. Was that your favorite? Or was it the Thanksgiving episode of season one where we saw Logan hit his grandson and all the craziness with his older brother? Was that your favorite gathering? or was it Tom's bachelor party, Shiv's wedding, we have Logan celebrating his 50th anniversary at Waystar, or was it this episode? So let me know in the comments out of all those I just mentioned, or if there's some other that you all have in mind, which is your favorite family gathering? If you ask this man right here, my favorite succession favorite family gathering is no doubt the Bachelor episode with Tom. That was one of my favorite episodes of the show. Such good writing, so many good laughs, but that's my personal favorite. Let me know yours in the comments below, but let's move on to the actual party as leave it to Mr. Kendall Roy as you're being birthed into the world of Kendall Roy as you're you're walking through a, a woman's uh, inner parts, right? And leave it to Rome to poke fun of that situation coming in and out of his mom and the running joke throughout the episode. It was just so funny to me. But listen, speaking of funny, we got my man Greg who's recently found out that he might not be going to jail. So he's like, all right, new man, let me go ahead and make my move towards the uh, the PR with Ken with uh, Comfy. And he wants to, you know, hey, hey, Tom, you know, I'm going to make my move with this young lady. How, how do you think some of these lines sound? He's like, dude, this sounds terrible. She's out of your league, which leaves Greg to say, speaking out of my league, what about Shiv? And I'm asking the same thing. I've always been wondering how the hell did Tom pull that? But he says, hey, it's all due to my, my skills in bed and a particular body part that uh, I'm pretty gifted in. So, hey, okay. If you think so, Tom, all good to you, my friend. But this is a moment that we've been kind of waiting for for weeks. And we've seen them in scenes together, but not so much so them, you know, having a good time with one another and then throwing the, the funny insults. We get a, mam uh, a mini family sibling reunion. We we got Ken there, we got Rome, we got Shiv, and we got Connor himself who recently had an injury going on. I wonder if that's like, if that was purposely written to the show or if the actor like accidentally like hurt his arm, but neither here nor there. They're all there to celebrate Ken's birthday and we all know celebrate really they're there for business purposes, right? We know Connor's probably there to kind of maybe introduce himself to some potential donors for his, uh, you know, running for presidency. We all know why Shiv's there, why Rome's there. So it's all you know, good time to celebrate family get-togethers. As Shiz brings up, oh, I don't really recognize any of these people. Are they friends of yours? Are they family members? No, they're just business associates, which goes back to Ken's whole fake persona and making himself look like things are uh, good on the outside. But I had to write this joke down because it was just so many quick little jokes that I love about this episode, but this is one of my favorite. As, <laughs> as Rome gives the gift that Logan told him to give Ken, and he's like, what's in here? <laughs> he says to him, it's your baby teeth and a couple 
actual like iTunes gift cards, which I haven't seen anyone give a gift card to iTunes since I was like, you know, in high school. But I just thought that that moment was just so funny. And Rome in this episode, you talk about the apple not falling too far from the tree. He is pretty much Logan 2.0. He's always been an asshole. But in this episode, man, that that he was looking pretty bad and, and also pretty funny. And we'll get to him in the treehouse a little bit later. But on to Ken, shows his sibling this room of like bad publicity about all the jokes about his siblings, uh, you know, with Tom going to jail, uh, Rome and doing some stuff, uh, inappropriate stuff in public. And then it goes to Connor talking about being the next president, which Con was like, that's not a good move for me. And he vows to take it down. But we learn in that moment that the Con heads are really coming out for Connor as he, I believe he says, has four million people voting for him to get into the race i mentioned it weeks ago man and i know right now it's looking like the show wants us to have the Jarrett to be the next president but man would that be a shocker if 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 khan ends up being the president we'll see how all that plays out but going back to ken again this episode really focused on him just put on this fake smile as he's going around the party he goes in this kind of quiet area he pulls out the card and you know thinking like Maybe my dad has something nice to say. Maybe it's a, a, a good gesture here. But listen, first off, he opens the card and it had to be like no other, no more than like 50 cent cards you can get at Walgreens or CVS. He scratches off the happy birthday part and puts in highlights cash out and F off. What a great way. What a great card to give to their son, right? <laughs> Which of course, leave it to Logan. But ladies and gentlemen, it's the it's also the terms. He gives him the terms of how to buy himself out of the company. So it just goes, which again, I don't know why Kent, he, he's not surprised, but at the same time, he is kind of surprised. Like, your dad's an asshole, man. What did you expect? And he'll give you a, 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 an iTunes gift card <laughs> to buy some new music. But of course, like I said, leave it to Logan to give his son the perfect gift and just, again, playing with his mind. But now we go back to my boy Greg. Again, he is now ready. He's, he's pep talk with Tom. He's ready to make his move on Comfy. And he's, you know, making his way in there. But she tells him, she shuts him down kind of quickly in regards to what he really wants to talk to her about about and she tells him hey uh, just a heads up uh, Ken wants me to really go in on you in the public so I'm going to do so I just want to let you know I'm going to try to stay tar- on target and not make it too bad and <laughs> And poor Greg, he's like, okay, milady, uh, thanks for the heads up. Uh, what can I do to repay you? It's again, just seeing Greg just trying to like flirt and try to get out of awkward situations is some of the best stuff on this show, in my opinion. And Greg's just the best. But let's go back to Ken here as he shows Naomi the gift that his father gave him. And again, let's go back to Naomi. We talked about it in the first episode this season. What's her intentions? Is she really into him? Is she using him? Is there some like underlining kind of move for the Pierce family? Again, you know, Logan wants to get back in bed with them, but we kind of get a little inkling in this moment of what her intentions may be as she asks him, and I was curious about it. What are your stakes, Ken? How much stakes do you have in Waystar? And we learn with a capital B, two billion, I said billion, ladies and gentlemen, two billion in stocks, which she asks him, yeah, okay, he's like, oh, you know, I'm gonna play with my dad, I'm not gonna take it, this, that, and the other, and she's like, yeah, that all sounds cool, but uh, let's, let's talk for real, <laughs> what does it look like if you actually took that two billion dollars, which I'm thinking, okay, okay, this is her intention, she wants to share hold, she wants to be a part of that two billion dollar uh, type of situation, but then when you listen to her, it doesn't sound like that, right, it almost sounds like she really is concerned like no because listen if i was in ken's position with all the shit that we've seen with the royal family i'm taking that money and i'm running with it i'm creating my own company whatever the case may be i'm done with that family but you know she's like it would probably be the smart idea to do that and i think that's the best idea but of course ken's not going to do that he's going to continue to go on with the with the show pony and the and the all the stuff with his dad but i don't know let me know in that in that moment did, did Naomi show her hand that she's more invested into his money, this $2 billion, or if she's really concerned and wants him to make the right business moves? Let's talk about that in the comments below. But let's check in with uh, the funny siblings, Shiv and Rome here, as they learn of the location of Lucas, and they are greeted by the birthday boy himself at this tree house, which, by the way, was made out of George Washington's cherry tree, and he denies access to them, but they make their way into the tree house a little bit later. But going back to Shiv, as she's, you know, as they've been rejected to the tree house, but also it's in that moment that she learned about the card that they were wanting to buy out Ken. 
in and his shareholders with the company. She's like, why wasn't I told about this? That's one example in this episode, but that is one of hundreds of examples in this season of she is, we got to remember, she's the president of the company, right? She has much higher status than Rome does on paper, right? So again, it just speaks to the title that you know, Logan gave her, but he really has his dog in a fight in Rome. And and I think Shiv is slowly, and she's so smart, but she's slowly starting to realize your dad's just using you as we'll talk about that conversation. Talks about a brother a little bit later, but it's in this moment here that we finally meet Lucas played by, I'm a big fan of Alex Gaddis Skarsgård, but it's in this moment that he is informed that that, and this is what Ken has this conversation with him, that my dad wants to buy you out. And I love that line that Ken says. He says that, when does Amtrak buy Teslas, right? I love because, again, they're the dinosaur of the company buying this new company. So I love that line that we get from Ken there. And, and just kind of focusing on Alexander Skarsgård, who wasn't really heavily involved in the episode. And I don't know if he'll be involved in the rest of the season because they also did this with, uh, you know, Adrian Brody. And, and they tend to do this. They bring in, like, these big-name actors for, like, a moment. Shalane Lathan is another example this season where they get a moment but then we don't see them again so we'll see if we get Lucas later in the episode or later in the season but you know we see that he's just kind of like he's a rich guy but he seems to be like a loner kind of you know awkward in a way and uh, he really hit it off with Rome a little bit later but going back to Ken as we see his ex-wife has now attended the party a Reva and we see them having they have like the most like up and down relationship that I, you know, on this show, but she tells him that, you know, Gary's here and the kids brought you a birthday present, all this stuff. And this is where Ken, you know, one of the few people that is close to him having a little bit of a moment and having, showing that vulnerability in the character. And again, that gift that he got from his kids was really like a, 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 a triggering moment for that character. But forget about, you know, Bridezilla. Let's talk about the birthday Zilla because Ken is literally just like, is the temperature in here good? Why is Connor wearing his jacket? it you know why is this happening where is the music the playlist he was like all in his head again it just shows you perception what are people thinking is uh, they think i'm lame they think i'm this that and the other and it just goes to show you again this whole perception of how he sees himself and how the world sees himself and it really kind of shows in this moment his privileged nature his fake wokeness is just so much that i love that they do with the king character and this was the stuff i was talking about last week this is more of the stuff i love to dive deep into with the character his psyche his mindset where is he at right now you know he has all this pressure going against his dad he's losing that battle but he's trying to win the battle of the public perception he's losing that as well so I love when the show really kind of gives us those kin moments those quieter moments going back to season one the being a robot in season two and now trying to get back on top of season three I love all the stuff that we get with Ken in this episode that being one of them so going to a conversation with Ken and Greg as (laughs) Ken calls him the snitch bitch as they're catching up and they're checking in with one another and we see Ken's like you know he he says I'm not going to spend the the article I'm going to play on you just because of what you you know to do and Ken gets nasty with Greg like really throw some insults at him about Greg just being a moocher taking money from the family and we see Greg you know going up to the TV screen and like punching the face of Ken but again we're seeing the that you know that everything's good Ken is slowly that armor's coming off and we see that later in the episode when the armor's fully off because he has a full on meltdown a little bit later on but let's go back to Rome who forces his way into the treehouse and he has a conversation with Luke is and they're going there you know again Rome like I said the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree he has some charm to him he knows how to play into assholes ways right he did that with Jared last week he did that you know in this episode and they're, they're hitting it off they're having some back and forth and it gets a little bit awkward when Lucas says oh um when's your dad gonna die you know I don't want this man li- lingering over me and this is where again Rome pivots the conversation he he handled that conversation I don't know if Lucas again we all know you can't trust any of these rich people they could just be smiling in your face and like you know hating you in the side but we see Rome pivots the conversation say you know yeah we're all looking forward to the day that my dad dies but how about this you won't have to talk to my dad it'll just be me and you you could be anywhere doing your thing if we need some oversight or some business type of inquiries well I'll just approach you and we see him you know saying yeah that sounds good and whatnot and Rome says hey how about that competition that my brother made let's go in the bathroom and piss on it on my own phone so again Rome 
He just go back. Think about Rome in season one. He didn't know his left foot from his right foot. He didn't know how to wear a business suit. He didn't even know what business was, right? But he looking at that Rome, going to the training session, right? And having his advice from Jerry to where he's at now, that whole arc that we got from him. And listen, I Rome is an asshole. He is an asshole of all assholes. But again, if you want to be that dude, if you want to be the next Logan Roy. He is playing that card. He is doing the exact same thing that I think a young Logan would do, obviously with less probably profanity and less of the crazy jokes that Rome makes, but he is his father's son, ladies and gentlemen. He is getting closer and closer to that throne by doing things like he's doing in this season. But we see him, again, he doesn't strike the deal, but Lucas agrees to meet with Logan on uh, like a Monday or what have you. So, and again, he might be lying, but it's looking like he's telling the truth. It looks like Rome has uh, notched another W under his belt to become the winning sibling, right? So let's check in again with Ken as he is ditching his idea. And I was kind of disappointed. I want to see Ken on stage because again, when he was busting the one twos at his father's anniversary, I want to see him on stage, but we don't get that in this episode, which was pretty a, a big disappointment for me. Let me know if you guys want to see him on stage with the Wu-Tang uh, cover band. But my boy, Greg, he gets his W. He gets the date with uh, Kofi or Sophie or Comfy, weirdest ass name. I think her name is comfy if I'm not mistaken she agrees to go on a date with him and I know Tom was going to be happy about that but let's go to the point where we get the meltdown this is where we see Ken he's looking for the present that his kids gave him we see that he can't find it you know Naomi gives him a watch he hates it he is just upset he's breaking down crying he's just he just wants to go home and it's at that moment I think we're seeing that this is Ken this is the real Ken this is the Ken that we saw in season one when he was just you know what do I do I don't have any you know, positives going for me. Oh, let me attach myself to Stewie, how that fell out of place. You know, season two, he was just completely a shell of himself. Season three, the beginning, he was all about himself. But now we're starting to see the, you know, the insecurities that Ken goes through in this moment when he breaks down and just literally he's in pain. He's been hiding his pain this entire season, but we really get to see it in this moment here, as well as I guess we saw it a couple weeks ago when he got that letter, that public letter that his sister wrote from him. So we get these moments here, here of, again, his insecurities. I think Jeremy Strong, again, fantastic actor. He plays those moments so well. But remember when I mentioned Tom uh, being jealous? Well, we see the jealousy finally uh, steering his ugly head in a way as Greg is like, hey, Hey man, we should be happy. We should be partying. And Tom, he's not getting the reception that he thought people want to give him when they th- learned that he wasn't going to jail. So we we see that Tom is still in his head. We we don't I don't know where he's at right now mentally, but uh, things aren't looking the happiest for this person that thought he was going to jail. And again, is jail time really off the table? But I think this was easily the best moment of this really great episode. And that's the moment where this has been brewing for a while. And this is between Shiv and Rome. We know that they go, they literally can not only verbally fight, they fist fight, right? I don't know if you guys remember that fight that they had in season one in that empty room, but we see them have it out here. And the truth really comes out as Rome won't tell Shiv the news about what happened with Lucas. And he goes into this whole thing about how men are handling the situation and the woman should just sit down and be happy that the men are here for them. Like, damn, Rome, he is not telling down at all we see Shiv speaks her truth and fills him in on how Logan's using him just like he's used all of the kids and Rome he doesn't want to hear that and he uh you know he says some pretty inappropriate stuff as he normally does in the situation when he feels pressed against the wall he's gonna punch right back at you 10 times hard he's gonna cut you deeper than you cut him and we see Ken gets in the mix and he says his two cents and he confronts both of them about meeting with Lucas and you guys really didn't want to come to support me which to be honest Ken I mean, this is your, this is the Roy family. What did you expect from them? Did you really think they came there for good intentions to celebrate your birthday? No, it's all about transactions. I talk about this whole family is a transactional family, but he's upset, obviously. Shiv's upset. And the person right now that's looking like the king is Rome in this situation, ladies and gentlemen. Rome is just like, boom, boom, you're roasted. Boom, you're roasted. He is giving it to his siblings. He is sitting on that high horse. Boy, I can't wait to see him fall on his face. Or will he fall on his face, ladies and gentlemen? Because he's he's looking pretty in control at this moment, especially when we see Ken, who could have hit his brother. He didn't. He took the high road. He walks away, leaving it to Rome to push his brother in front of all his business associates, all his business 
celebrity friends. He falls on his face. I thought he was going to cry for a moment, but he walked away. I mean, he, he pretty did he cried at that moment, right? I bet he's going to cry in the car for all my Friday fans out there. But he's embarrassed. And Rome's on top, ladies and gentlemen. Wrapping up the episode, we see Tom tell Shiv he's not done partying. He's out to look for a good time because of the good news that he got. But uh, we'll see if the good time plays out well for him. We see Rome kind of prematurely calls his dad, leaves him a voicemail, say, hey, I got the W. He's going to go ahead and sign with us. We'll see if that comes to fruition and he's going to walk home by himself. I mean, he's really on a high. I don't know if I've seen Rome celebrate like this before in regards to getting this W. And then we end with Ken just being the complete opposite of the Ken that we got in the beginning of this episode, who was happy, smoking blunts, ready to party. And now he's just covered up in a blanket and just like depressed and sad. And this is really who Ken is right now. He's been putting on this whole facade this whole season, but this is really, he really is mentally, at least in my opinion. And like I said, what another great episode. Again, whenever we get the family drama, the the Roy siblings going at each other, really speaking their truth about the situation, how they really feel about the situation, not being fake and phony and just put it on, you know, put it on the front. I love when we get their insecurities. I love when we get to see them. We see Shiv in this moment. She's like partying, but she also realizes I need to make a decision. I'm not the president of this company. My dad does not have faith in me. I need to do my own thing. Same goes with Ken. And again, Roman, he is playing the game like his dad would at that young age, and he's winning the game so far. But again, we all know they get too close to the sun just to fall down on earth. So we'll see what happens with Rome. We'll see what happens with Connor with the president situation. Of course, what is Greg and Tom going to do with Greg with his new girlfriend on the date? And what is King going to do when he learns that news? And of course, what is Greg going to do with him just like... He doesn't know, or I should say Tom, doesn't know what to do right now with his life. But let me know all your thoughts in this episode. Again, your pros, your cons, your highs, your lows. Was this your favorite family gathering? If not, what is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. And of course, what you all hope to see in the final two episodes of this third season. Let's talk about it in the comments. If you stuck around to this point in the video, I appreciate every single one of you all. Before you leave, make sure to like the video, share the video, leave your thoughts in the comments, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell, that way you don't miss any of my future reviews. Hope you all had a great holiday. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're staying safe. As you can see on the screen now, subscribe to my channel. Check out my other content, and we'll catch you in the next video.